رد على على سيد المرسلين محمد طه الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الله تعالى myself and you tushin. just myself and you tushin. which is to as you know من نعمة تجزى إلا بتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى and our master Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said as you know إنما الأعنيات so the and the hadith which were mentioned are proofs that for us is to have the sincere intention. Subhanallah, we could go, but without it, if we were like uh, going through the routine, we talked about going through the routine last week. If our day was just a routine of a checklist of things to do, not really bearing in mind why we're doing these things, then we would miss out on a lot of barakah, on a lot of blessings, on a lot of reward. Because among its secret merit is that it differentiates between the habit act of worship. And here and there, whenever, but maybe the next time we step, have a good intention in doing so. For example, maybe you just had a workout and you stink. So your intention going into the shower is that I want to I want to protect my fellow Muslims from smelling my B.O. That's why I'm showering. Anyways, just to shower. Because of this simple intent you did differently was that you brought turned this deed on the Day of Judgment. You would see ales of good deeds. And maybe when you did it, you didn't even think of it as a big deal. But SubhanAllah, on the Day of Judgment, we will realize that Allah Ta'ala rewards the little that we do with a lot. And we don't know which deed of ours could tip the scale of good and make them more weighty. Rush obligations, of course. Room, they are, that's what I believe about them. That is something you also do. The haram, that's what I believe in you. But also, let's take the opportunities, the chances that show up throughout our day, which could also add to our scale of good deeds, which would make the angels write more good deeds on us throughout our day and night. Last time around, we ended talking. We ended our talking about the to his son, to people of the past, as well as attached in the world. And he reminded him, even the only th the fact that was of Fir'aun and others, how many evil people came and went to Subhanallah. So those people, not only is it that they're mentioned with ugly words among the people, but there's a painful torture awaiting them. The kafir, if death doesn't, if he doesn't fajatan, sudden, if he, when the angel of, angel of death tells to you is the new of it, and from that moment on, that that is a kafir, and this torture does not lessen. لا يخفف عنهم العذاب Subhanallah. So there's these two things which they left behind. As for the righteous, it's the opposite. Not only do the people who came after them mention them using good words, not only are they a role model for the people who came after them, but also they are, what awaits them after is plenty of reward. Not only is it dice, their graves, they're by a light that resembles and it is full. To his son, Ibn al-Jawzi mentions, Rahimahullah, it is as if the one who starved in this life never starved. And the one who was satiated, the one who was full, was never full. The one who fasted a lot and went against his nafs, his nafs, his self, if you will, or the, to do the haram, he himself controls starve, engaging in the haram. The hardship that he went, subhanAllah, did to be presented for the person from it, this is a challenge, subhanAllah. Yes, sometimes that desire, whatever the sin may be, the desire to commit it lasts five, ten seconds, but it's really those five, ten seconds, it's a battle, subhanAllah, for some people. So these hardships, when the person... And then what is eternal reward for life? And so, Allah, they forget. As for the one who was a slave to his, he went 
and satiated that craving. He was pulled by the leash wherever his nafs took him. And his belly was full and his sins were grave, subhanAllah. When he sees the punishment that awaits him, he's going to forget any moment of pleasure he had in this life. And so it was never such a fullness. This life he's going to forget. SubhanAllah. How merits excellence. Have at your side lazy. To be lazy in doing so, this is a bad companion to have with you. Rather, it's him, uh, energy that you want. Drive to accompany you in your pursuit of excellence. He says, Rahimahullah, loving relaxation, to be addicted to just hanging out and chilling and relaxing. What does this do? Loving relation ensue, ends in regret that exists every desire. The sentence, he said, English trend. Love relation ensues in regret that exceeds every it says laziness companion. In He's talking of laziness and do good deeds. The person who wakes up at 5 a.m. to go work out and then hits the shower and then maybe reads the paper and then eats his breakfast and then even makes breakfast for his own family and then goes to work, works the 9 to 5, puts in overtime, comes back, does his side hustle when he comes back from work and then he showers and goes to sleep. This person, and maybe we call not we, people him drift. Motivated. But gave, we never said that the prayers nor read the obligations or recommended. Still lazy. In doing the good deeds, in fulfilling the obligations, and then indulging in the unlawful pleasures, such a laziness would result in pain after death that exceeds the pleasure one felt when engaging in the prohibitions. Yes, when a person commits certain sins, why do they do it? Because they associate that with pleasure. Why? Well, because they like drunk. This pleasure is something that is them to disobey. People have come pleasure. But that awaits them. The regret is something that would add in those moments of weakness. So the person who feels lazy and doesn't pray, this laziness would result in the obligatory prayers, that is. This laziness in completing the obligatory pr prayers will result in pain that exceeds the relaxation and happiness that he felt when skipping the prayer. Some people, it's the time for the prayer and they don't want to pray until the time of... It's not like they forgot or they would do that because... And watch TV. Other than praying, that pleasure they would have felt to encounter to prayer and not repent. They would regret. They would regret and this regret would exceed that momentary pleasure. So, to bring the matter closer, because sometimes when you talk about the pain and torture awaiting the sinners in the hereafter, maybe some people, because they imagine it as so far away, as it should. If we bring people closer, if we bring an exist, would be more instant, if you will. If someone tells you, drink, present you a bottle of alcohol, and then he tells you, but if kettle, do that, would you drink the alcohol, even though there's pleasure associated in it? No, because you know that the pleasure of alcohol would be exceeded by the pain of drinking boiling water from a kettle. So imagine the pain of hellfire then. SubhanAllah. We tolerate one moment of it. And that's why the stories of Islam say, There is in pleasure, which is far. So this is uh, help us stay away. This is also another matter to reflect upon. If we're presented with a sin and we feel weak, Really imagine that, or uh, bring this reality to your heart, that this, if I engage in this pleasure, I could be, it could be followed up with a pain, which would make me forget this place. So let me just be five seconds, seconds, until this desire goes away from the sin, for this also. Take heed, know that, perf and avoiding the prohibitions, is an imperative, it's not an option, you must do it, it's imperative. When man, whenever man transgresses, crosses the religious limits, then one is forewarned, hellfire, hellfire. So when the person limits, Ibn al-Jawzi is warned that boundaries would punishment in the hellfire. And he goes, moreover, is the meaning seeking excellence, the ultimate goal of the diligent people. 
not of the oblivious people. And merits, excellence, vary in rank. Some people deem excellence as zuhud in this life. Some people, they say that being detached from, the, from this life, from the worldly pleasures, this is excellence. Some deem as engaging in with though that the reality is really the high level is a practice. Abdullah al Hararim instill in us knowledge and practice. He says to his son, Ibn al Jawzi says to his son, if both knowledge and practice take place, they elevate the person to achieve knowing the Creator, the Exalted. They move, they move one. Knowledge and practice pushes you. They want to love fearing for Allah. And that is the sought acceptance of Allah. This is the sought goal. This has been made clear in the Allah Ta'ala. By worshipping Allah, we are the the question that so many people have. They live and some of them die without knowing this question. Why am I here? SubhanAllah. So what a blessing for us to know why we're here. We're here to obey Allah Ta'ala. And Allah promised us a great reward if we do so. And on top of that, something amazing to think about, as we know, among the base of belief is Allah is the creator of everything. And Allah will whatever happens by the will of Allah, good evil. Look at this amazing fact. Who Ta'ala willed for us that we do. And on top of that, who rewards us good deeds that we do. Allah. Again, thinking about matters which would prevent us from sinning. He says, Rahimahullah, magnificent matters take place in proportion to one's resolve. Not every wish is achieved. Not every seeker finds one's target. However, if is expected to exert to what Allah is the one down a little bit. As we mentioned, he mentioned worldly pleasures. Nor acts of are the highest level of excellence or virtue or merit. Rather, the combination of knowledge and action based upon knowledge is what leads to excellence. And here we're reminded of the story of the master Sufi, Abdul Qadir al-Jaylani, anhu, who showed the importance of knowledge and practice. Remember, the devil came to Abdul Qadir when he was worshipping Allah, the, the pious and righteous from the people because they want worshipping Allah only. They don't by whatever can come up when you live among people. So they seclude themselves. Abdul Qadir secluded himself. And what happened? The devil came to him in the form of a, a big illuminating light. And a voice came out saying, Ya Abdul Qadir, I am your Lord, my slave. You don't have the obligations. Whatever is haram upon everyone else, you can do. So subhanAllah in the position of you know, when you put yourself people whose stories are uh, scary you know I was doing salah praying Quran and then I saw a huge light in front of me and this is what I heard what would be my situation would I be able to resist would I have enough knowledge to resist uh, this tribulation this trial or would I be among those people who fall for the trap Abdul Qadir radiallahu anhu did not fall for the trap he knew that this was the Jarit. And so quick on his feet. practicing a knowledgeable. He knew, Rahimahullah, that Allah Ta'ala is neither a light nor is he darkness. He knows the Quran. Abdul Qadir knew that Allah Ta'ala said, That Allah mentioned, Allah revealed in the Quran that he created both darkness and light. That Allah's creation, he did and he stayed away from who am I to do whatever is haram stuck and stayed away from the haram even until up until he died so the devil told him you have defeated me with your knowledge before you I made 70 worshippers go astray so 70 people before Abdul Qadir for this, they thought light that came to them in the and they really thought they want now that they didn't have to, to stay away from the haram by that. Of course, this Allah, the Nul Jawzi, when he said magnificent matters 
take place in proportion to one's resolve, this is something that's reflected in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. What's the magnificent matter that took place? Well, 1400 years ago up until now, Islam started in a, the, the Prophet ﷺ started from a desert in Mecca. There's no corner of the where the Adhan magnificent matter into his sallallahu we could just talk so long or days about the resolve of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam the amount of work and effort he put into and the amount of obstacles that he faced when spreading his call alayhi salatu wasalam he had as you know seven children all of them died while he was alive or and he even lived to see some of his own an obstacle be able to do this um, being one of your children die, protect you from this tribute in six of your own children time salam that there is a mission he has to fulfill and he didn't let these trials and tribulations stop him his own family members when you have family members you expect them to support you in the good that you do but look at his own uncle Abu Lahab who curses him and then stabs biggest enemies. This is a hard this some of us and we would give up and you know, start a business doing things like many of us if forget about it. But the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again he had a strong resolve. And there is the companions who of course they had the example of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam to look up to. Look at uh, Sa'ad, for example, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, who when he became a Muslim, his mother until Islam. So Sa'ad, uh, the mother and their child, and the physics existed. Between. But what was he upon the truth? By sending among, among the people of Quraysh to clarify what was truth from falsehood. So Sa'ad wanted to stay upon this truth. So he told his mother his, the famous answer, which is that, uh, O oh mother, if you were to live and die a hundred times, I'm here, if you were to lose, leave this matter, leave Islam. This, take, this takes a subhanAllah. And Abu Bakr, who gave money away to, and then by the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for your family, ya Abu Allah and his Messenger. To be able to give all of your money for the sake of Allah, subhanAllah. How did he do it? Really, ask yourself, subhanAllah. Maybe take a moment to calculate what's in your bank account, the, the money that you have stashed under your mattress. And you give all of that in one shot for the sake of Allah. We knew that Allah had for this. And we know, of course, for deeds that we do. But us, as they were our age a black man who came to Lebanon and then worked hard despite the opposition from normal people and their racism and not only from the normal people on the streets but even so-called sheikhs who did not like for him to be the who is standing up truth and soul sheikh there was a time, and you know this, but I love to mention Allah because humility and of humanity, where where we think for platter. We need reminders like this. Sheikh Abdullah, on one occasion, uh, as you know, he would go around serving shy to to people, and this is how he would open up the conversation with them, teach them beneficial matters. So, one man who was approached by Sheikh Abdullah. Sheikh Abdullah was there that he was going to ask him for money. So what did he say to you? Go, go. So years, years passed. He ended up in the Sheikh. So his friend, him, oh, Sheikh Abdullah, he says, go, we're going to go see him. So he got pumped up. Oh, no, yes, let's go see Sheikh Abdullah. <laughs> so when they went to the session, this man sees the same person that some time ago, years ago, he had told to just keep going. May Allah give you. So of course he probably felt embarrassed. But he still went uh, sent to get you remember me? <laughs> the guy who uh, offended me was a humble person to satisfy 
to, to become popular among the people, for people to kiss his hands and mention him in goodness. His goal was to spread the knowledge in a time where ignorance was widespread, in a place where uh, people, the first words that they would teach their children would be to curse Allah. A baby, uh, a toddler, uh, would buy a curse, curse your Lord, subhanAllah. This is he came to. There's others, no, maybe you don't. This is also an amazing story. Of what's the theme we're talking The resolve of people. Maybe you know the story of the cab driver also in Lebanon, who during the Lebanese Civil War still worked. On, and what he would do, subhanAllah, during what? During a civil war, when people, their main concern is, am I going to live today or is it, a, am I going to die? Am I going to be hit with shrapnel or straight? Or am I going to live people's concerns and resolve like this for him to uh, do a da'wah, engage was in the middle of the civil war. How would he do this? You may ask yourself. He's working on a, in a taxi cab and he's doing da'wah at the same time. Yes, he is. When he would pick up passengers, he would simply turn on the radio. Nida'ul Ma'rifa. And the, this is a great radio station. They spread knowledge in it. So the person would listen. And sometimes he would turn the radio off and he himself made an official conversation with the passenger about the or the weather, things like that. So I told him, take me to there were the Muslims controlled territory and like that. So the border, it's within the same country, but border within the turfs, if you want, right? So a man told him, take me to the border between the Muslims and the Christians. So our brother, the cab driver, uh, started driving and he started telling him about Islam on the way. Well, what did this man do? But told him. So our brother. So he didn't just let me just uh, through. No. And kept talking to him about Islam. And the man, the Christian man, who entered his cab as a Christian, while he was in his cab, maybe a few minutes later, became a Muslim. He said his shahada while he was in his cab. Allahu Akbar. But what do you do when you, when you catch your prey, just then run away? No, you, you tie it up, run away. Man, that's not what I'm trying to His cab are rather beyond enemy lines. And a time where, depending on, the, on your ID card, what it says, whether you're Christian, Muslim, you could get shot. And massacres happen like this, subhanAllah. But he had a strong resolve. He braved the risk, if you will. So he crossed the border with him, took him all the way. And on time, okay, now that you're a Muslim, you have to learn how to pray. Thursday, uh, the man comes back to his house, turning and sees out of the building of this man walking around. So he asked, what's going on? And guess what? He was informed that that same man who became a Muslim in his cab a couple of days ago had died. So this man died as a Muslim because of what? Because of the resolve of a cab driver. A cab driver, subhanAllah, you know, in the eyes, uh, especially ignorant people, but subhanAllah, uh, people, some of them have not done with Islam at their hands. He knew what an important goal he is trying to achieve, and that is to get this person to become a Muslim. And he did what was needed to get him to that goal take the longer route, spend his gas money, uh, sacrifice time, which we, he would have spent with his family back at home, cross lines, risk getting killed. The, the risk, if you will, was what reward? That for Allah, for you, then the world and what's in it. So these are examples. And I mentioned the Prophet والسلام, and the companions, but what happens is people think, oh, but... He is the best of the creations of Allah, and they were the companions. Um, they looked at him, they spoke to him, they had around him. As a cab driver, here to specify it. So he is this, whether it's high or low, this is by the will of Allah, as we know. And not every seeker finds one's target. However, the slave is expected to exert effort. Everyone is directed to that for which one is created and Allah is the one who is sought for help 
everyone, every person will Allah willed for someone, they will work for hellfire. For so what's up? No one knows. So we have the blueprint to follow and we have to work according to that. We don't use this as an excuse. We don't use the fact that we don't know upon which state we would die to stop us from engaging in the good and from staying away from the evil. Now, when we to which state we would die, an exception that the person وسلم, in his dream to enter paradise. So see the proper he dies in a way. If you have been blessed with this blessing, then yes, you can go ahead and say, I am going to paradise. This is this is this came in the religion. This is not something that's doubtful or some random person on YouTube said. This is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our teachers taught us. Um, uh, because after in today's lesson, which subhanallah, and remember that we said with uh, not doing the good deeds, the person who does not do their obligations, the person who is drowning in the sins, this is a lazy person. No matter how many times a week they go to the gym, no matter how hard they work to get their promotions, no matter what else they do, if they do not fulfill their obligations, if they're in sins, this person, Ta'ala, laziness, be among the people, have a strong result. With that, we will end as we always do. With اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب اغفر لي وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات وجزى الله محمدا عنا خيرا